Solution formation is the formation of intermolecular bonds between two or more different compounds found in the same mixture. Now let's remember what intermolecular bonds are. Intermolecular bonds are non-covalent forces that hold two or more different molecules in place. Suppose we have a single molecule. What holds that molecule in place? Well, covalent bonds are the sharing of electrons between different atoms of that same molecule hold that molecule in place. What holds a bunch of different molecules in place? Well, non-covalent forces such as dipole forces or London forces hold these guys in place. And these forces are called intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces are simply non-covalent bonds between different molecules. They hold different molecules in place. Now what are solutions? Solutions are mixtures of at least two compounds. Suppose we had a beaker A with compound X and beaker B with compound Y. Now suppose we wanted to make a solution out of compound X and Y, so we mix them. What would have to happen before a solution is formed? So by definition we said solution formation is the formation of intermolecular bonds between X and Y. Well before a bond is formed between X and Y, the bonds between the X's and the Y's must break. So before X and Y forms a solution, intermolecular bonds between compound X and intermolecular bonds between compound Y must break. Once all these intermolecular bonds break, then intermolecular bonds between compounds X and Y must form. Now remember, the breaking of a bond is endothermic. So these guys are endothermic. The formation of bonds is exothermic, or ener energy is released. Now from another lecture, we saw that change in enthalpy is equal to a change in internal energy plus PV work done, or the work done by the system on the environment to create that system. We also saw that if pressure is held constant and the number of moles is held constant, the change in volume is zero. If the change in volume is zero, this term becomes zero. So we can say change in enthalpy is simply equal to change in internal energy. Remember, when bonds are broken, reaction is endothermic. Okay, energy is required to break a bond. So the enthalpy of this system, of this guy, is positive. Enthalpy change of this guy is also positive. Now when bonds are formed, energy is released. They're exothermic. So the formation of Y and X is negative. Now if we add all these guys up, we get something called heat of solution. And heat of solution can tell you if the solution formation is exothermic or endothermic. Now if this guy is negative, it's exothermic, and bonds formed are stronger or more stable than the bonds broken. So this bond between X and Y is greater or is stronger and more stable than that bond or this bond. If the heat of solution is positive, the bonds formed are weaker than the bonds broken. So the bond here is weaker and less stable than the bond here or here. Now enthalpy will never tell you if a solution is spontaneous. Likewise, heat of solution does not tell you if a reaction is spontaneous. Now remember, only entropy dictates spontaneity. Luckily, solutions usually increase in entropy, and entropy determines spontaneity. Now, under right conditions, solutions are usually spontaneous, and that's because entropy is increased. It's not because the reaction is exothermic. And in fact, endothermic reactions with an increase in entropy could be spontaneous.